this panel is invisible, invisible. Um, but we're um, honored to have here Michigan Supreme Court Justice Richard Bernstein. Um, in conversation with Jason Harris, who is founder of Jason's Connections. Um, check it out at jasonsconnections.org. And um, they're sharing their experiences, views, and message on life with disability, mm -hmm. the visible and the hidden. Mm -hmm. Please, over to you. going on with you or why you're having struggles and why things are hard because it looks on the outside like everything's okay or that there's nothing that you're not having a hard time and I think sometimes it's hard to convey that this is these are some of the struggles I have and I think sometimes once you tell people that some of the struggles you have it's also a little bit interesting to convey well while I have struggles I also have a lot of strengths too and I think that's really important with anybody, no matter who they are, to see them as a whole person, with that their strengths, weaknesses, likes, dislikes. And, I, and, you know, I think as somebody closely related to autism, but not always, there's a misconception that my whole life is built around being autistic, where that's very, very, the idea, I do have to do that. I have to plan things. I have to make sure I have good strategies. I have to make sure that things are the way I like them, but also there's a lot of things that I just do as a normal every day like anybody else, which is either making sure I, you know, food, making sure I have activities, getting work done, making sure I have time for my interests, doing things I like. Like walking my dog, which is a hassle because he likes to walk three hours. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing. There's a lot of conceptions, like, with, with, that sometimes come with you, whether if you have if you have, um, let's say you have um, problems with your hands, sometimes there's misconceptions with autism, there's misconceptions, or not misconceptions, but there's conceptions that all don't apply to everybody because it's a spectrum. For me, I'm very, very sarcastic. I have very dry, I'm really good with humor. There's some things that I don't always get, but, it, but I can explain it. So I, I really think that this is a great way to have a discussion about the similarities and some of the differences that we all face. And I think I really want to be able to have people be able to open it up and ask me questions about things you're curious about. I mean, I could sit here and lecture all day, but I really want to hear what you want to know about, what you want to talk about, and whether it's about me, what I like to do, whether it's being on the autism spectrum, or having a learning disability, or running my own business. I really want to make sure that you all can ask whatever it is you want to know about my life or what it's like. And I'm going to be very open about it. So thank you so much for coming today. I'm going to hand it over to Justice Bernstein real quick, and then um, we'll take some questions. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I, I just really want to say that I'm really delighted. You know, I just, I'm going to yeah. like this. Can everyone hear OK if I just talk like this? Yeah. 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 I, I just I just want to say it's such a great pleasure to be with you and to be here. This is such a great event, and I, I want to thank our hosts for the incredible work they've done in putting this all together. But the reason that this means a lot to me is because I really love having a chance to spend time with my friend Jason. Mm -hmm. Jason is one of the most remarkable people I've ever come across because I think he really embodies what the film festival and what disability means, which is a positive spirit. And his spirit is so captivating that he brings souls together 
But most importantly, if I've had the chance to travel across the country with Jason, what I have been able to see is the fact that there are so many people that have autism in their families. And Jason is able to really have a chance to connect two worlds. We were at a school in Houston where Jason had a chance to speak. And it was one of the most moving experiences I've really been a part of. Because what would happen is, is that Jason is able to express what it's like to be on the autism spectrum to people who have siblings or family members or parent, whoever they are close with, especially in high school, a lot of people have siblings that have autism. And Jason was able to really connect with them in ways that even their siblings or brothers or sisters weren't able to express about themselves. And it was a really powerful thing. I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, my questions, I, I would imagine, are dealing with one of the physical issues of disability, which is kind of easier to notice. You know, as a blind person, it's relatively straightforward, relatively easy to kind of figure out when someone's blind what the struggles and challenges or difficulties that we have. And I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. And the more personal you make your question, the more I love to answer it. So whatever questions you have for both of us on the physical disability or on the autism spectrum, Jason, I really would invite you to ask. And again, the more personal the question, the more we're able to connect with you at a very powerful level. So please, ask some questions. This is very dramatic. I yeah. can see if there's hands. <laughs> um, I'd like to know specifically what help you had, if any, with your dysgraphia. Um, for me, with dysgraphia, it, it's still really, they, they try to do muscle motor movements, but it takes a lot of work and doesn't, it just strengthens the muscles a little bit. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier, or you have to work on, like for me, I grip a pencil wrong, so it causes pain. So the main thing I usually do is, I have a computer with me, like, a ton of times. So I'm very technologically oriented because it's really helpful to... Motion of typing is a simple enough motion that I'm able to do it in somewhat of an array fashion. And that's why when anybody asks me, like, do you have a pen? I will never have a pen. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions, please? The more the better. Anything and everything is open. Yes. <laughs> um, it's always dramatic. So a lot of times people talk about the challenges that are presented um, by moving throughout the world with a disability. What are the things that, um, what are the positive experiences and the things that you're grateful for and associated with, associated with, with having the experiences you do with disability? Well, I think that's a really good question. And there's a couple things. One, um, just off the bat, being on the autism spectrum gives me a really, really good chance of uh, that complex ideas don't intimidate me. I'm very, I'm able, like, I went to the Natural History Museum there for six hours yesterday. It was the most amazing thing, and, like, just to read it for all six hours was, like, like, so complex ideas in my mind move really quickly, so sometimes if I get, if I get a, if I get a brainstorm, I can get something done in, like, an hour that might take other people, and it's, and it's legitimate work. I mean, it's not just that I, do it just to take it fast. Like you, you get brain surges, which can be really, really cool because you get these ideas out so quickly that it, it's really helpful. I think also um, one of the things that happened with disability that isn't directly is that when I was 21, I got diagnosed with thyroid cancer, and I mean it, it's it's definitely an intimidating thing. But I think knowing and helping to work through a lot of different things before make it that just another challenge that you're going through. It's not like, oh my gosh, this is this huge thing for me. It's more like this is just another thing that I'm working through. So I think there's a lot of, for me, there's been a lot of advantages from having a so-called disability. Other questions? Yes. I'm just wondering, what are your feelings about being normalized in our ableist society, and do you think attitudes have changed? Can you explain what you mean? Well, like, it, um, what you just mentioned, like, you have to keep track of your executive functioning issues, mm -hmm. and I just wonder, like, 
maybe if society had changed its ways, like, would you feel like you have to conform less to our ways? Um, I think that's a really interesting question. I think there's definitely times where you feel like that. I think it's really pretty good strategy and really having people around you that you can be like, look, I need this little bit of help or this little bit. I, I think it's really hard to be like, I wish society would change the whole way it is. I mean, even if it is because there's so many things going on for so many people, it's, I think it's more just like anybody. You get to know people. If you have something, you ask for a little bit of help and you try to do as much as you can by yourself, if you're able to, or if there's something that you're having trouble with, either ask for help or find some strategies that you can do it for yourself. Because, I mean, in the end of the day, you're going to be the person who puts yourself up. Even if you get help, it's it's really up to you to prop yourself up. Others? Yes. Yeah, you mentioned that, like, brain searches, mm -hmm. do you ever have the opposite? Oh yeah, definitely. There are definitely um, slumps that you have. There's also, and I think a really good point is, some of those brain surges that can be an advantage can also be a disadvantage. I can't control them. Then it becomes something where it becomes really hard for me to function because there's so much information that I'm processing that I can't control what I'm actually able to do. So sometimes functioning goes a little bit down because like, let's say I'm in a huge crowded room full of people and everybody's talking. I'm taking in everything everybody's saying. So sometimes it's hard for me to sort of know, to sort of hear somebody else who's talking because there's so much. And then you're like that too. There's times where you're just, you get brain blocks or you, you're not able to do as much as you wish you would be able to because there's hot, there's surges and there's um, low points. Next question? Yes. Yes. I wonder, do they actually want help or do they think, no, I can do it myself? I, I think that's a really good question. For me, um, I think the best way to go about that is just to ask, like, do you want help? I mean, I, people will be very honest with you. There's times where people, you know, where I'm carrying a lot of things and people ask me if I want help and I'm like, no. Or there's times where I'm like, yeah, I would really enjoy the help. I think the thing is just for anybody, just don't assume that you should help somebody. Or if you're going to help somebody, work with them. No matter who it is that you're working with, you really want to ask them if they want help. And then if they do, how can you help them in a way that's productive for them? This is great. Please, that's a good question. But Richard, could you answer that question as well? What, what, what was the question? Whether, um, how do you feel if somebody asks, would you like some help? I'm actually grateful for it. If yeah. somebody asks for help, you always look to the intentions of the person. If, if there's a person who's a kind and warm person who wants to provide assistance, you never look to how they're providing the assistance. You always look to the internal nature of how a, a person is caring enough to do it. And uh, I would just say, as a, as a blind person, I would just say it always makes me kind of sad when I see people who might be blind, you know, to not be kind and nice to people that are trying to help them. Because when someone wants to help you, however they want to do it, as far as I'm concerned, I'm grateful for that help. So please, if you see me on the subway or crossing a street or walking around the city, it's help that I would greatly appreciate. And your willingness to be of help or be of support is something that, that really does give you the independence to live the life that you want to live. Other questions, please? Yes. Uh, Justice Bernstein, um, Jason uh, um, responded to the question of like how his uh, invisible disability was a positive. Can you answer the question of how in becoming a Supreme Court Justice being blind has been a positive and also what the negative was? That's a great question. So basically um, the, the challenge that I have is that this is, um, you know, in terms of, in, in Michigan, we elect our, our justices, and so the, the challenge that this has presented is that 
this is the first time that this has ever happened before in our country's history. So because of that, it's very exciting because it's the first time it's happened that a blind person has been elected to the highest court of the state. At the same time, it's very difficult because it's the first time a blind person has been elected to the highest court of the state. Um, the way that it works is, is, is that you have to approach everything as a team. You have to work together with everybody. Um, and so much of it is the fact that you want to make a difference in the best way that you possibly can. And I guess I'll just give you an example. When I was a litigator, the way it used to work was I would handle pretty much all federal litigation um, in terms of disability rights, civil rights. So whether it was allowing for aviation to be accessible for disabled people, the public transport systems in our cities to be accessible.